this demo, I will cover the new CamArch to Vericut interface. The CamArch to Vericut interface is a simple tool for current Vericut users to automatically import Gco, stock, fixtures, and other information from CamWorks into Vericut. The CamWorks to Vericut interface is available starting in CamWorks 2013 Service Pack 1. After installing CamWorks 2013 Service Pack 1, there will be a folder inside of the CamWorks data folder called Vericut. Inside this folder there are example files, templates, and the CamWorks to Vericut macro files. The CamWorks to Vericut interface runs from the macro menu inside of SolidWorks. Here is a look at the CamWorks to Vericut interface window. The first field is used to define the project name. It will default to the name of the SolidWorks file. This name will be used for all of the files saved out of the interface. The next field sets the location on your hard drive where the output files will be saved. We have a couple of options here that set how the CamWorks to Vericut interface determines which project template is used inside of Vericut. We can either let the CamWorks to Vericut interface select a template for us based on a couple of settings files inside this project templates directory, or we can use an existing template with the machine and controller predefined. This settings file will map our selected CamWorks machine and post processor to a Vericut machine and controller. Here we have a setting for the path of our G-code file. We can set the CamWorks to Vericut interface to launch Vericut, or if we want to, we can save out the files and run Vericut later. Here are a few examples of the CamWorks to Vericut interface in action. I have an assembly file with a 5-axis part. You can see that I have a fixture plate and a custom stock defined in the assembly. If I run the simulation in CamWorks, you can see the toolpath is cleaning up a face on the part. You can also see that my tool is defined with a custom tool holder inside of CamWorks. Now we will run the CamWorks to Vericut interface. To run the interface, I will go to the Tools menu in SolidWorks, Macro, and then Run. I will then browse to the CamWorks Vericut DLL file in the DLLs directory. For this example, I will let the CamWorks to Vericut interface determine the project template to be used, the controller, and the machine. Once again, this is controlled by some settings files inside my project templates folder. Before clicking OK, I will exit out of this interface to show you an easy way to make this macro available for future use. Inside of SolidWorks, if I go to the Customize menu from the Tools pull-down, I can go to the Commands tab and add a Macro button to my toolbar. Upon dragging the new Macro button to my toolbar, a menu opens up allowing me to select the Macro. I can also rename the tooltip and select an image. Now I will be able to use this command for future projects. Let's click on it again and bring up the interface. With all the settings set to what they need to be, we are ready to run the interface. I will go ahead and click OK. In the background, the G-code will be posted, the tooling information, the stock, the part file, and the fixture files will be saved out, and Vericut will launch selecting the project template with its machine and controller. If we look at the project tree in Vericut, we can see that this has occurred. Looking at the tooling library, we can see that any custom holder defined inside of CamWorks will also come across. We are ready to run the verification inside of Vericut. In the previous example, we were using an assembly file. Now we will use a SolidWorks part file. In this file, we have a SolidWorks sketch that we are using for an avoid area for some of the toolpath. We will go ahead and run the CamWorks to Vericut interface to export our toolpath to Vericut. This time, I will use a predefined Vericut project template that has the machine and controller previously defined. 
When Veracut launches, you can see the part stock, tools, and G-code are brought over from Camworks. Since we are using a predefined template, I will come over here and unhide my clamps that would hold this part to the table. This way I can verify that my toolpath won't hit the clamps. For this last example, I have a tombstone fixture. You can see from the Camwork simulation that this job is set up to utilize the rotary table so as to minimize the number of tool changes. I will go ahead and run the Camworks to Veracut interface. For this, I will select my predefined project template so it is a horizontal machining center. You can see that the tombstone fixture, the stock for all four instances, and the tooling are all brought across. I will hide these extra coordinate systems and zoom in to the model to see the machining. Thank you for watching this demo.